So, so far we have discussed a few cases of finding out the earth pressure by using the trial wedge method and remember that uh, we have talked about only Rankine's wall. That means the wall is smooth and vertical. There is another interesting application of uh, the trial wedge methodology would be uh, when we talk about analysis of completely submerged retaining walls and the backfills. So, I am going to discuss this about today and uh, this is the retaining wall. And uh, there is a surcharge on this. So, this is the surcharge. And this happens to be completely submerged. So, the water table is up to this point. The height of the wall is h. And we want to analyze it for let us say active earth pressure case. Now, this P could be P A or this P could be P P. We will complete the trial wedge. So, this is at angle of theta A B C. And because of the submergence, what is happening is I can find out the weight. So, weight will be equal to half into gamma. Now, the question is which gamma I should be taking because it is a case of submergence. So, this gamma gets replaced by gamma T that is the total unit weight, all right. And uh, this is multiplied by H square into cot theta. So, weight is known. Now, let us draw the free body diagram. The free body diagram would be there is a normal stress acting over here and why effective because it is a case of submergence. So, we have to superimpose here the pore pressure in the force form not the pressure form. And then there is a component of the force which is acting in the form of shear stress. So, this is the free body diagram of the system. Now, rest of the things remain as it is what we have been doing since long. The only question is how to obtain the U prime and remember N will be equal to N prime plus U prime. So, U prime is the pore pressure which is getting developed in the system because of the submergence. So, a simple way to do this would be if I find out the pore pressure at point A and pore pressure at point B. So, it remembers the previous course if I want to find out the pore pressure at point B what I have to do is I have to insert a piezometer. And if you insert a piezometer over here, what is the height of the water column? 0. So, pore pressure at B is 0, all right. And what is the pore pressure at point A? This will be equal to, if I put a piezometer over here, the height of the rise in the water tube or the piezometric tube would be H. So, this will be equal to gamma W into H. All right. So, the variation of the pore pressure from B to A is triangular starting from 0 attaining a value of gamma W H. So, if I want to define U as the force, now this U as the force would be, you need not to write it as a prime, U will be equal to average of U A and U B. So, this is equal to half into gamma w into h, all right. This is in the pressure form. Now, if I am trying to find out the u, if I say capital U, 
let it be small u force now this will be equal to this pressure is acting on this surface ab all right so this will be equal to half gamma w h and what is the length of the surface if this is h this is theta so this is equal to theta h by sin theta correct multiplied by 1 perpendicular to section so this is equal to h by sin theta into 1 so this comes out to be half gamma w h square by sin theta this is the pressure pore pressure which is acting on the slip surface ab because of the submergence is this part okay now rest of the things are simple mechanics put this condition sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fy equal to 0 and solve this function so this is theta this will be t cos theta this will be t sin theta now we have here the two components like this okay and then we can compute the values of if this is theta this is 90 minus theta so this is also going to be theta so if you solve these two functions and one more thing which we require is we require a relationship between t n and prime so t n and prime can be written as t equal to n prime tan of theta is this part okay yes sorry i am i'm sorry this is going to be phi so this is going to be phi prime okay the major unknown is n prime so what we have to do is from these two equations we have to obtain n prime and one of the ways to get rid of this would be i can substitute for the t value when i am taking the components equal to n prime tan phi prime so you will be getting two equations and you can solve those two equations and hence you can derive the relationship is between the p because the first equation would be fx equal to 0 so this will be equal to p plus t cos theta equal to n prime plus u sin of theta is this fine and simply by using the resolved components of the weights i can take this also into account as qs into h into cot theta so both the components would be qs into h cot theta plus w w is known and this will be equal to this component cos theta now you solve this expression so ultimately what we should be getting if you if you solve these two equations what is that we are going to get we are going to get the values which are known as the earth pressure p which can be obtained all right you have to just do simple mathematics to obtain the uh, pressure functions anybody in the class what will the final expression we have filtered out the effect of water so the p will be equal to half gamma w into h square plus when you are filtering out the effect of water what about the surcharge and the weight which is going to come so this will be half effect of buoyancy gamma bh 
plus q s is this fine h cot theta this has been so far the normal expression which we have been using in all these trial bed analysis and what is the component which is missing the 10 component hope you can realize what are the different components which have been presented over here in the form of mathematical terms. So, because of submergence we have the buoyant weight though we started with the total weight of the block, the pore pressures have been taken out from the component. So, when you do this type analysis what is going to happen? This will be the pressure because of the water surcharge plus buoyant weight of the material. Now, suppose if you want to find out the maximum pressure which is acting on the system, maximize this function. That is it, all right. So, when you maximize, what will be get, what, what is that you will be getting? The known terms that is half gamma w h square plus the effect of buoyant soil mass. So, this will be half gamma b h square into k a plus the influence of surcharge which is acting on the system that is q s into h into k a. Is this okay? Without doing all this analysis also you would have been able to obtain this function just by using simple principle of superimposition. Three pressures which are being taken into account 1, 2 and 3 and that you are aware of, fine. Now this analysis we can easily extend to the cases when we have partial submergence. In that case, what is going to happen? Any guess? The block or the trial wedge which we have considered is now going to be a composite of two sections. Now, rather than having water table here, the water table has moved down to this place. So, what will happen to the weight? If I had written here A, B, C, D and E, the weight will be having now two components. So, this is W1 and this is W2 and we have discussed enough about the state of the soil mass in this block. All right, in the first course of soil mechanics. So, depending upon whether you have a sandy soil, compacted clays, silty soil or whether I assume a variable saturation in this zone above the water table or completely dry mass, long term, short term stability. If you remember, you know we can attribute gamma values to W1. So, this gamma could be dry this could be gamma partially saturated. I can include the effect of capillary action also here. So, if I include the effect of capillary action, what is going to happen? There will be a going to be a zone of capillarity, okay. So, we have now W1 getting divided into W11 and W12 that can be taken care of. There is no other difference, rest of the things are almost similar, fine. So, this is another situation which normally uh, we come across in the real life. Now, partial submergence could be uh, because of several things. 
this could be you are basically pumping out the water during construction and maintaining the water table over here. It could be because of the drainage which is going to take place and hence the water table does not remain up to the top of the backfill. Under any circumstances, uh, the analysis can be done very easily. It is a good example of how would you extend simple uh, analysis which is being used the trial wedge analysis for finding out the earth pressure on the system. If you remember the way we computed the uh, stress acting on the soil mass, uh, I can also use the principle of superimposition over here. How? I know the pressure which is coming because of the entire system of height h and then I have water dropped up to this level. So, I know what is earth pressure because of this. So, in that case uh, h gets divided into two parts. We can have the h1 as the height of the free water table all right and then we know the pressure distribution because of this and then from this point onwards what has happened? The water table is only up to here. So, this is the earth pressure because of the soil mass, the water table is coming only from this point onwards. So, this will be equal to gamma w into h1. So, this is also you can do. By all circumstances, what is going to happen? The P will be equal to half K A gamma H square. Fine. Subtract the effect of H1 height. So, minus 1 K A into gamma h1 square and then what is there? The buoyant force plus half k a gamma b into h1 square. Try to prove this function by using the simple mechanistic laws. Any questions? Any doubts? Fine. Now, there is another condition of purged water table in the system. So, when we are dealing with these type of situations, the question is how would you construct the retention schemes or the retention system, retaining walls, which is going to be beneficial and uh, suppose if I take a case that this is the retaining wall. We know that the critical failure surface is going to be like this. Idea is to minimize the earth pressure which are going to act on the wall, all right. And suppose there is a rainfall which is taking place. So, because of this, a situation like this or this might develop. Now, what we want to do is, we want to minimize the earth pressures which are going to act on the system during rains, submergence. I have two options with me. The one is, I will create this u prime or the u value as 0. What is happening because of this? If you take moment about this point of all the forces, you will realize that the water which is present in the retaining wall in the form of the pore or pressure has a toppling effect, correct? That means, this U has a tendency to topple the wall. The more this pressure, P is going to be higher because then you require more reactions to balance this. 
So, in real life the best thing would be if you can create a situation so that the pore of pressure becomes 0. How will you do that in real life? Pore of pressure can be maintained 0 along AB which happens to be a slip surface when I provide a filter over leak there. So, suppose if I create a layer of filter like this. filter media. Sometimes you also call it as a drain. You have done these things in your first course where we had talked about the non-homogeneous earthen damps where we had provided a filter layer to act as a tow filter. Alright. Now, because of this what is going to happen? If I ask you to draw the flow net for this situation which you have already done in your first course. See page analysis, what is going to happen here? Draw the flow net. This is a flow line. Okay. And this is how the flow net will look like. These are the flow lines. What about the equipotential lines? Equipotential lines are supposed to be cutting them perpendicular to each other. I am sure now many of you will be unhappy to see this type of flow net. Why? We are defining the conditions of flow net, flow lines intersecting the equipotential lines at most of the places in the system. Look at this point. At this point, by virtue of being a filter media, the pore of pressure is 0. So, this happens to be an equipotential line. This is exposed to the atmosphere, this surface. So, this is also an equipotential line. Alright. So, equipotential lines are cutting each other, not correct. Flow lines, you are seeing the ambiguity. Equipotential lines are also intersecting the filter layer line, fine. So, it is a rough flow net which we have drawn just for the sake of understanding, it is not the correct flow net. Another issue is when we are creating a filter media layer like this, it is extremely difficult to execute this type of a filter drain in real life during execution. On black you can draw this very easily, but it is not very easy to execute this type of a filter drain in the field. But still what people do is they do for go for layer wise construction and then by maintaining the geometry they provide this type of filter drains. But I hope you can realize it is not going to be very easy situation. So, if I create this type of a filter drain and if I ask you to find out the pressure, this is pressure 1 all right coming from the wall onto the block. What is the another way of providing a filter drain in the retaining walls which is normally done? Uh, the second situation would be which is rather easy to execute in the field. The filter layers are provided in the form of a vertical chimney and this is how they are connected to the outside. Uh, atmosphere, even this can also go outside the atmosphere. So, this becomes a vertical filter drain. And suppose if I ask you to find out the pore pressure, oh sorry, the earth pressures acting on the system, this is going to be P2. Each point along this drain is exhibiting the pore of pressure equal to 0, all right, but not along the surface of the slip. So, A B the pore of pressure is still acting as U, what we have shown over here, agreed. So, for the sake of construction feasibility, this system is very good. 
Now, if I ask you to draw the flow net over here, this is an equipotential line because this is attached to the atmosphere. So, you have flow lines, you know, coming and intersecting like this. And what about the equipotential lines? Now, this becomes a difficult situation, but the equipotential lines are also going to intersect somewhere like this perpendicular to the flow lines. So, this is how the flow net has to be completed and then you can find out what is the pore pressure acting at each and every point along the slip surface. You can still use this function to average it, get the value of u and do the analysis. The common sense says in second situation because the pore pressure is acting, the P2 is value is going to be higher than P1. Okay. So, you have to design the system accordingly. This is fine.